Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's try to figure out what the difference is between a spectral class and spectral type. So here we're going to try and illustrate what a spectral type is. And unfortunately, this is quite often in all kinds of reference material books and on the internet used interchangeably, and that's why it's so confusing. So what we mean by spectral class, where we have stellar classification and we classify stars according to this stellar classification. So we have the O, B, A, F, G, K, M, for your typical stars on the HR diagram. And so we have the associated electron jumps, which gives us their specific wavelengths associated with those jumps, photons that get absorbed coming from the inside of the stars. And by those missing colors, those missing lines, we can identify what spectral class of star we're dealing with. But you can see that there's a lot of variation between B, A, F, G. There's a lot of space in between. You can see how the spectral lines do change considerably going from F to G and from G to K. And so we want to be able to identify that even more accurately. And so we've subdivided the stellar classification by some numbers. Starting from 05, we go to 06, 07, 08, 09, to B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9, then to A0 and so forth. So we subdivide it, every stellar class, in 10 gradual changes each represented by a number starting from 0 through 9, and then we get to the next stellar class. Those subtypes are called stellar types. So that's where the difference comes in between stellar class and stellar type. Again, it's often used interchangeably, unfortunately. But so when you talk about our sun, for example, our sun is a G-class star, but it's of type G2. It's not a G1, it's not a G3, it's exactly a G2, which is associated with a, color, with a temperature of just under 5,800 degrees Kelvin. And then if you can look over here, you can see that it has a fairly good distribution of the calcium plus one line, the hydrogen line, the iron plus one line, and the neutral iron line, and a very small amount of the neutral calcium line. So those lines are visible in the spectrum and by doing that by making measurements accurately of the width and the what we call the line strength the intensity or the the boldness of the line so to speak within the spectrum we can identify that our sun is indeed a g2 type star so that's what we call spectral types by using the subdivision on the classes makes a lot easier because there's a lot of difference between for example a g2 and a g6 star they're both of the class g but there's a significant difference in the line strength of the particular elements. Notice that for the six, the calcium becomes stronger, the hydrogen becomes weaker, and both iron plus one and iron neutral become stronger as well. And so we can see those differences, and therefore we have, change, we have kind of subdivided the class in those particular types, which makes it easier to say, now I know exactly what star you're looking at based upon the typing of the different classification. So um, spectral class, we have the letters O, B, A, F, G, K, M, and the spectral type is a subdivision of those classes into smaller bands where we can more accurately describe what type of star we're looking at. And that's the difference between the two. That's what we mean by spectral type.